tag team stand up. It's June. Alert, alert. What is going on in the lead, bro? I just getting home from hoping, bro. Yo, it's really June right now in the lead, too. First the Phoenix Buns, and now the Celtics, bro. Are you guys that scared of the Warriors? Holy. Now, we're going to tap into everything that we need to tap into um, in terms of just making sure we can recover. This is actually low-key a 2, 3, and 1 type of video uh, because we also uh, need to also backtrack. There's really nothing to really backtrack on like the Draymond Green situation. The reason why I didn't make the video on that in the first place because nothing really happened. He just became an unrestricted free agent. That doesn't mean he's 100% guaranteed going to leave the Golden State Warriors, but... He can test out the waters and everything like that. So I'm going to wait until basically what happens with that Green situation. So that's basically to catch anybody up if you have been clueless about what's going on with Draymond Green and everything that we're like two, three days late on. But now, fast forward, here we are. Porzingis is now a Boston Celtic, bro. Hold on, man. Where's the Charizard do that, man? How the heck did this trade even go down? Oh, perfect. I think we found it. I think we found it. Okay. Bro! Now, we're going to tap into my man Kenny once again, Beecham. I think that's his uh, thing, right? Um, but anyway, first, let's see how did this happen. How did this happen? How did this happen? How did this, how did this happen? The Celtics Wizards Clippers are closing in on a trade sending Perzingis to Boston. The Brogdon to, dude to L.A., Mark the, the Morris dude, and draft compensation. What is draft compensation? Because usually they just say draft picks. What is draft compensation? Like under the table money to Washington? So let me get this straight, you guys. In all credit to give Porzingis, he's not going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer respectfully. But this dude is like literally 27, I think 28 years old. He's in the prime of his basketball career, prime of his life. He has a decent amount, five to 10 years left in the league. Yes, he's been injured the past three seasons, but he's still respectively an all-star. So you mean to sit up here and tell me we have another trade where an all-star is traded this time for Brogdon is going to L.A. Clippers, not the Lakers, the Clippers. So basically a, a dude that he had a lucky playoff run, but overall, bro, he's not a, a decent amount of a role player, bro. So Perzanius got traded for... 10-piece lemon pepper wings with some fries. Well done, crispy and everything. I'll give him that with the drink on the side. And a half-eaten bag of some chips, bro. And a couple hundred dollars. That's all it took for the uh, Celtics now to have Prisanias. I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm the Warriors, I'm not going to sit up here and be shaking in my boots. But you guys, now it is a must to make a move. And it is now. Because let me tell you, we have the draft night that's coming up. Oh, yo, by the way, we're recovering absolutely all of that. FC Brothers says, I need y'all to hook me up, and I need y'all to be in that stream when that draft is over. Because we're going to be looking up all those highlights and be covering all those highlights of those players uh, that we are not familiar with, especially like we did last year, so we can have knowledge all the way up there and just be, you know what I'm saying, improvement and growth and all that types of stuff. But nonetheless, that's just going to be an important night. Because that is the NBA draft of 2023. Now, with that being said, there is a whole bunch of trades that's going to be going down, bro. First, you have the Phoenix Buns. And now you have the Boston Celtics. All right? It is the time for the Warriors to make a move. Whether if you're going to do it with Draymond Green or whatever, whatever you got to do, something with Poole, even with somebody else, who knows, bro? We need to get these moves because now you're talking about two teams that are potentially... Third round teams. You know what I'm saying? I think potentially the Celtics can get back to the finals just with this squad right here. But that doesn't mean they're going to win because the Warriors are. But the Celtics, they're in the right direction in my opinion, bro. They're going to go right back to that third round right before, right, right where they was at this year. You know what I'm saying? They lost it in seven games. This is, this is crazy. How did the Celtics make this move, bro? Like this isn't even, a, this is a, yet again another unfair trade. A unfair deal that's happening. This doesn't make any type of sense. They made it seem like Perzanius is like like a 72 overall. He's and when he's not injured, maybe an 83. Celtics just got a free all-star. Alright, so we're gonna cover the man Kenny. 
and see his details on this and give our opinions. Is a wizard. It's gonna be some draft conversation. As I'm recording this video, I don't know exactly what that draft conversation is, Wizards fans. So I cannot tell you whether or not you won or lost a straight. But I think any move that you do at this point, where you're shedding salary or getting rid of the current core, is gonna be a dub. I know the Bradley Beal went tough because you didn't get any draft capital back for the second leading score in your franchise history. But still, washing your hands, you gonna forget about all of this. You know what I'm saying? Chris Dasworzigis is a Boston Celtic, and I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. The Clippers are expected to trade pick number thirty um, to the Wizards. Pick number thirty. Okay, so the Celtics got pick number thirty, which they're probably not going to get any. It, like once the draft picks are past, like let's be honest, eighteenth to twenty, maybe. There's really unless a one out of a blue moon, like late pick, all star superstar. You know what I'm saying? Which is really rare. Like. This is still, this is an unfair-ass trade, bro. Now, at this point, the Warriors should just literally give up somebody like on their damn bench that averages five minutes a game and see if we can get like two All-Stars. Because if this is the energy the league is letting them, bro, how did this trade go through? How is this allowed, bro? Because they made it seem like Prozangis is a 70 overall, bro. You can't slip here and tell me Brogdon is anywhere near Prozangis. And then the Morris dude, this dude is literally pushing 40. Come on, man. You had somebody's uncle involved in the trade. Man, so that come on. Hey, you got more in this trade than you did for the Bradley Beal trade, Wizards fans. Thirtieth overall pick, Jimmy Butler was drafted thirtieth overall years back. So, you know, and that's really, really weird. Why are the Wizards just giving everything for, for the Wiz, bro? Yo, if any NBA team is looking for somebody that's like on sale, like wholesale or anything, the Wizards are giving everything for the low. What the hell's going on? Yo, y'all gonna have to, uh, yo, the face of the franchise is about to be Kuzma. Just, bro, they gave up Bill literally for nothing. A bag of some chips and a double whopper with cheese. And now you gave up Perzanius? For a 30 overall pick? Who do you think, who do y'all think? They must have some confidence in this NBA draft. This might be the best NBA draft possibly in history or something. Am I missing out? Because, bro, how... This doesn't make any sense, bro. Like, if you if anybody sit up here and think about it, this does not make any sense. This is not fair at all. Like, for I can understand maybe the Celtics gave up like Brogdon and like Smarter Marcus. That's a fair deal. They keep Smarter Marcus. They got Tatum and Jason, Brown and Jalen Steele, and they got a center. They got Prozangus. They got a big four. Dude, you can't really, like, rely on Horford. If I was, like, 50 or 50, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I cannot lie, man. I really, really do like the idea of Chris Stavsporzingis being on the Boston Celtics. Obviously, the biggest question mark regarding Chris Stavsporzingis has always been the health. Um, last year, he had the healthiest season of his young, young career. He's been around for a minute. The healthiest really? season of his career playing, like, 65 his games. And I think the last seven of those games, the Washington Wizards themselves decided to shut him down because they were going for a higher draft lottery. Wow. Uh, so he could have potentially played a 70-game season. So the Wizards was tanking just to give him up for something less. Okay, that doesn't – whatever. So I was wrong about that. So Prezines actually played 65 games. Shout out to Kenny for saying that. Uh, last season so that makes it even worse. He's coming off of a nice season and you gave him up for free You're just helping the Celtics just like stay like afloat now Guarantee the Celtics are doing high up in the playoffs for the next five seasons at least Brown and Jalen and Tatum are smack dead in the prime. They're young. You know what I'm saying? That's the damn important and key issue thing right not issue but key a uh, great thing about that like, they're young and they're in their prime. All-stars. You have a veteran, technically. Is Bruce Agnes County is a veteran? You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but he can shoot the three. And now you're going to get a guaranteed consistent three-point shooter with Bruce because now you have fresh young legs, younger legs. Man, bro. And then you have smarter Mark. Nah, man. You can't sit up here and tell me this. If you sit up here and tell me this is fair, bro, I don't even. You don't deserve to have any basketball talks, man. We knew that the Boston Celtics could not just run it back for the 100th year in a row. They needed to make some changes. Some people thought it might have been Jalen Brown because he's up for that $300 million extension. They think it was really realistic to trade Jalen Brown away and still think that you could contend. It's not a lot of things out there that you could potentially get that will upgrade that. So instead, they make some changes around the outside, and that is trading the six men of the year, Malcolm Brogdon, and getting back Chris Stapps Porzingis. Malcolm Brogdon and Chris Stapps Porzingis have the same question marks um, attached to them, right? When they are playing, they're they're pretty pretty good. I mean, we just saw the six men of the year, Malcolm Brogdon. But 
It's the, it's the when they are playing. So I see this as a kind of shuffling of the deck for the Boston Celtics. The cost is not really, really high. Both of these players are going to the last year of their contract because Chris Desperzin has opted into it. And when we got to the playoffs uh, this season, and we did see the injured version of Malcolm Brogdon. And already they have this log jam as far as primary ball handlers or, or people that you trust with the ball in their hands, whether it be Derek White, whether it be Marcus Smart or the Jays. That's four guys right there. And then though Malcolm Brogdon is one of the steady forces with him winning six men of the year, there still is a log jam at the position. And one of the positions they could have used some help at was the big position. Because again, uh, you, you have the injury history. Robert Williams has been struggling to stay healthy over the last couple of seasons. So I, I just think that if you can convince yourself that Chris Porzingis can stay relatively healthy, this feels like a real dub to me. And though he doesn't have the defensive versatility of Al Horford, obviously, I mean, Al Horford is 30, 37 years old. Like, how long can we expect Al Horford to be at least a decent NBA player? You know, is he going to play until he's 40 and still give you quality, quality minutes? I don't know. And this feels like a little bit of reassurance. Again, it's a one-year rental, but it could turn into something longer term, depending on how the connection really works. Joe Mazzulla is going to have to really figure out how That's crazy, to man. Uh, shout out, Kenny, once again. Um, that part is right there covered pretty much right on the money. Uh, this is a W for the Celtics. You're talking about you had a heartbreaking... You were right there um, going to the finals, facing the heat, heartbreaking loss and everything like that. And you bounced back literally in two, three weeks, literally. It hasn't even been a full month. You know what I'm saying? And you took a W, you know, with this uh, offseason already. Uh, so, hey, man, the Warriors, I'm really needing them to make a move like right this second, bro, because, um, yeah, it seems like a lot of these NBA teams are not playing this offseason, bro. This is going to be a lot. It, it literally feels like almost like if you ever play like the uh, the franchise modes or like what is it? What do they call it? My League modes in like 2K where it's just like, you know, you get to like year like uh, 20, uh, 55 or whatever. And you just like start trading in it. You see all these players on the different teams and everything, man. It's like the whole league is doing a whole jumble. You know what I'm saying? The players everywhere, bro. I think the 2024 NBA season is going to be the one for the money, bro. Especially with this draft coming up, bro. Like, And not even going to lie, there's a lot of players in this draft that I'm just now finding out. And that's drawing on me more like outside of the Wimp Bananas, dude. You got the Stute Anderson, dude, I believe. The man Steph Chef, Luka Curry, man, was out there training with them and everything. Not that we're about to get them and anything. These things is like a top five pick. Um, but, you know, you have all, like, all types of other players that's coming in this draft and everything, too, man. That's going to be a crazy 2024 year, man. Um, so, hey, man, comment down below, man. Um, what do you think this trade or uh, signing or whatever trade, I think trade, whatever, uh, uh, Perzion is going to the Celtics. Does the Celtics, does this mean that they're an instant finals team? Does this mean that is potentially hurt the team? Because you also did hear, uh, which Kenny did make a good point on, is that Perzion is, and it's facts because we've seen it from highlights of uh, Perzion in the past, he's really like a defensive liability. You know what I'm saying? I play better defense than him in my sleep usually most of the time. Um, and he's really an offensive type of a player, and he's sometimes soft, you know, in the paint. I can probably bench press more than him. So is this going to help the Celtics out more offensively and hurt them defensively, which can, in the long run, be uh, negative for them? Or do you think they're just respectfully still a second-plus round team? I think, in my opinion, a sell, regardless of Prasani's being a dip, defensive liability, the Celtics are still a second round plus team. They're still a threat in the Eastern Conference. They're a team I would not want to play at all, especially, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I believe Brown and Jalen is probably going to be 10 times hungry coming off of that, uh, you know, crazy turnover loss and everything like that um, in that third round. And then you have Tatum and everything like that. He's been playing amazing these past seasons and everything. Um, so, you know, he's going to come back even hungrier. So the Celtics are definitely a, 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 a two plus round team. I can assure you that. Um, but that's why I'm just like really saying that the Warriors need to sit here and make moves right in, in this now. They can't sit up here and wait till July. Like they need to make these moves now. If, like you need to give up your draft picks. I don't I, I, like, bro. We have a low draft pick, bro. Like what were you like, 25 or 30? If I'm the Warriors, bro, I, I would give up all these draft picks to try and see if we can land like one more All Star for the team. It's not stacking and it's not being unfair, but. Bro, something, man, because I'm not going to lie. I'm not panicking, but I'm kind of like, okay, like something needs to happen right this second. But let's say for worst to worst, even if we, like, lose green and we don't even make any type of moves in the offseason, bro, like, we're still a first-plus round team. We're still a threat in the Western Conference. We're just making it more difficult for Curry and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to have the whole workload load on Curry. So uh, that's just the biggest thing, man. But let me know, man. Interesting to see your comments.